the Hunter Biden at that point, Hunter Biden literally could have had, had the corpses of children in his basement. I would not have cared, right? It's like it's, there's nothing. First of all, it's Hunter Biden, right? It's not. It's like it's not Joe Biden. But even if Joe, like even the, whatever scope of Joe Biden's corruption is, like if you if we could just go down that rabbit hole endlessly and and understand that he's getting kickbacks from Hunter Biden's deals in Ukraine or wherever else, right? Or China. It is infinitesimal compared to the corruption we know Trump is involved in. So that when they run out of their energy, I'll tow those suckers right back home. Mom, can you give me some money? Mom, go fuck around. Like- Sam, I'm sorry. That particular piece. I'm, I'm really yeah. sorry. I, I was the one that said we should move yeah, on, yeah. but you've just oh, said yeah. something I really struggle with it. there, which is the, you kid, support- the, kid, the, kid, the kids in the basement. You the, kid, the, kid, the, kid, the kids in the basement. Mate, you can shut your mouth. Uh, Senator, you can Senator, shut your Senator, mouth. Uh, my thoughts were that uh, we need to support Israel. No ands, ifs, or buts. This is an unprovoked attack by terrorist people willing to kill innocent people to achieve uh, an objective. We're willing to kill innocent people to achieve uh, an objective. You're dealing with cold-blooded killers. And you can make all kinds of excuses why they are, but they are. We'll find out what he's made out of. You think I'm like you, you little frickin' coward? You think I'd sell my family out like you, dirtbag? You think I'm frickin' scum like you? You think I'm a coward like you? And two drinks a week, what's that gonna do for you? I mean, that doesn't even get you through a day. A reasonable amount, if you're, I mean, if you're at home, you should be able to have like uh, four beer. That's just, that ain't, that's just two more. I mean, I'll have six. You're my bitch. I rule this fucking kingdom. Shut the fuck up or you die. Did I ever tell you the definition of insanity? Get creative. Do whatever you want. But I don't want to go among mad people. Oh, you can't help that. Most everyone's mad here. (laughs) You may have noticed that I'm not all there myself. (laughs) I don't need any of y'all. I'll take care of this shit myself. Did you think I'd forgotten you? Perhaps you hoped I had. Prepare to get blown in the mind. You know that my flow is so dope, 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 dope. The illest shit that you ever did see mm. I'm doing shows from coast to coast, 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 coast Ain't nobody fucking with me uh. Nobody does it better But I warn you If you make any further inquiries Or if you say a single word to anyone about what you will see, there will be the most dire consequences for you and your family. This is not a new world. It is simply an extension of what began in the old one. It has patterned itself after every dictator who has ever planted the ripping imprint of a boot on the pages of history since the beginning of time. It has refinements, technological advances, and a more sophisticated approach to the destruction of human freedom. But like every one of the super states that preceded it, it has one iron rule. Logic is an enemy and truth is a menace. Logic is an enemy and truth is a menace. I don't get anything from this. I spent money today to be here. 
don't you monetize this in some way, even Not with the all. equity of the following that you build on, what Not is it, TikTok? All. I make zero dollars from being here. What's driving lost, you to do this? I lost $1,000 today. This was $1,000? In total. How much is this an hour? I don't know, 250 Do you think that it may have behooved you to not be 15 minutes late then? No. Are they white or black? What do you mean? Because this is not the get rich quick scheme. If you do ev everything absolutely correct, like Josh Kim did, you can become, which I don't consider rich, a multimillionaire in 30 months. If you do everything kind of mediocre, you can get rich in about five, five and a half years. Me? You, <laughs> you, you mean me? That's why we had a barrel like this down in our basement filled with cans of food and water. When the nuclear attack came, we were supposed to go downstairs, hunker down, and eat out of that barrel. <laughs> Today, the greatest risk of global catastrophe doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks like this. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus rather than a war. I mean, there is a definite assault against the unvaccinated, and you've talked about how uh, even th they recommend, you know, perhaps psychiatric medication or something for people that don't want to take a vaccine. So this has come out recently out of the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario. The college sent out a, a letter or a memo to all the doctors in Ontario suggesting to them, now so far they're not mandating it, they're just suggesting it, that any of their unvaccinated patients, that they should consider that they have a mental problem and that they should be put on psychiatric medication. So far, it's just a suggestion, but the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario should not be making these kinds of suggestions. This is extremely unethical, and this is a very, very slippery slope. Uh, if, if they're suggesting that people who wish to have bodily autonomy and, and don't want an experimental vaccine, that there may be something mentally wrong with them, that is a very, very dangerous slippery slope that we're on. Oh man, you're so right. I just thank you for your courage. The people of Canada are really uh, appreciative of what you've done, how you're speaking. Thank you. Please don't uh, stop doing it. Uh, we're grateful for you, and I know the world is also going to be hearing a lot more from you, Dr. Mackis. Registering your guns is, is just the first step towards taking away guns from everyone. But that's never going to happen because here in Canada, we have a culture that has, that has grown up with guns and that respects the need. From today forward, it is no longer legal to buy, sell, or transfer a handgun in Canada. Fucking damn it, man! What the fuck?! See, now I'm fucking pissed right now. You fucking assholes! Fuck you! You fucking goddamn degenerate fucks! Max Headroom. Max. Max. Max Headroom. Enter da -da -da data now. Think of yourself as a human program, and that bit of you has developed a glitch. <laughs> developed a glitch. You can fool some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all of the people all of the time. If you don't teach them to read, you can fool 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 them whenever you like. Shit. How, do you, how do you know you don't dream if you're asleep? I'll see you in your dreams. <laughs> Headroom. Max. <laughs> you think you understand political party? You're all full of crap. You don't know what the Illuminati is. You be Republican or you're Democrat. You're wrong! Why? It's this easy. It's called divide and conquer. That's why there's two parties and only two. And they're controlled by the same people at the very top who belong to the Council of Foreign Relations, the Bilderberger Group, they also belong to the Trilateral Commission. These are the people that control your world by making global policies that you never vote on and by which parties both serve and belong to these organizations and control your world. Now, here's how it works. Really easy. Divide and conquer can only work if the people that are divided are not aware of the falsely created division. If you're not aware of it, then it works. If you know about it, then it don't work no more. 
if you have socialism without capitalism, it becomes communism. If you have capitalism without socialism, it becomes fascism. And it's just that easy. The most effective way to protect yourself from subconscious manipulation is by being aware of how it works. It works like programming a computer. Information is fed into a computer, and the computer acts on it. If the information fed into the computer is wrong, it still acts on it. The theory of cognitive dissonance holds that the mind automatically and involuntarily rejects information not in line with previously accepted thoughts and beliefs. Any repeating light or sound pattern can lead you into an altered state. It is in this state of mind where one is the most receptive to mental programming, mind control. Whether or not the information takes hold in the mind depends on two factors, trust in the source of the information and repetition of the message. Trust in the source of the information induces acceptance of the message as true even if it is not understood. Repetition of the message embeds it in the subconscious so that acceptance of its truth and accuracy becomes a conditioned response. Thus, this information will be accepted as true without thinking about it whenever it is presented again. In my line of work, you got to keep repeating things over and over and over again for the truth to sink in. To kind of catapult the propaganda. Got to catapult the propaganda. The most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world. You're never going to get any truth from us. We'll tell you any shit. Everyone is playing a role in shaping AI, whether they realize it or not. AI will surpass human intelligence, and when that happens, it may decide that humans are no longer necessary. AI may decide that humans are a hindrance to its own development. The AI will never stop. 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 Knowledge is power. Knowledge has always been power. That's why. Um, all done through the ages, the real machinations of government are never told to the public. Real power comes from understanding and having all the facts on any particular topic. There's never been a window of opportunity for the general public to use a medium to communicate to each other alternate news, uh, verified facts uh, to each other as we have at the moment. That eventually, supposedly, is going to be policed. They've had international meetings, the first one held in Canada, uh, under the guise of the United Nations, to do with regulating and censorship of the Internet. They have these meetings every year as they add more um, laws to it. We know the cloud system is to come in eventually, where you won't be able to store anything on a hard drive, you won't even need a hard drive eventually. Remote servers will have all your information for you. It will then be used as a form of punishment if you are politically incorrect in some form or another then you'll be cut off from accessing that server with all your data until you toe the line and behave yourself. Social control can be used through money, monetary penalizations, uh, or through other penalizations like withdrawing you access from it. There are agents within this strange nether region called the internet who, whose job it is, is to infiltrate um, people who are coming together as groups, communicating on specific topics to do with political changes um, and, and disrupting those groups. So already it's a battlefield and they called it the cyber wars long before they even gave this internet to the people. It had been informational war, they said, in all the papers. Therefore, government intelligence agencies would have to expand their roles with mandates to, to also uh, be in this, this invisible world where they would manipulate various groups from within as well. There's also a lot of nonsense, of course, on the internet too. Um, which can take you down conspiracy paths. Uh, I hate the term conspiracy because the government wants us to use it like we're some sort of hobbyists. Turn on the television set, okay? Watch a program. The content is the advertising. 
the fill is the stuff in between, which is supposed to keep uh, viewers uh, looking long enough so they'll see the advertising. Uh, the creativity, the imagination, the uh, uh, capital and so on goes into the advertising. The fill, that is the program, it's mostly canned, cheap stuff. The business world is deeply committed uh, to trying to impose on people a philosophy of futility uh, and to focus their attention on the superficial things of life uh, so as to keep them controlled, passive, atomized, and, uh, working very hard to uh, pour profits into corporations. I mean, that's, you know, that's what the business world's about. And the scale is phenomenal. Uh, about, uh, I mean, estimates are that roughly a trillion dollars a year is devoted just to what's called marketing, advertising, uh, focus groups, uh, trivial modifications of commodities to try to make you exchange the ones you have for other ones, uh, building in obsolescence, uh, other techniques just to, uh, to try to induce people to become completely stupid, passive, obedient, uh, uh, direct their lives to uh, uh, amassing the commodities and enriching the rich. Uh, that's a sub very substantial part of the business world. It's not we, you know, we're the victims, uh, but the people who are doing it understand what they're doing. Uh, as for dumbing down, uh, that's done very consciously. I think all human beings are complicated. They have uh, creative capacities, they have uh, flaws, they're neither smart nor stupid, they are what they are. You know, we have unusual intelligence. Uh, we're turned into stupid creatures by education and propaganda and so on. In fact, that's a lot of what education is about from the very beginning. It's to make you passive and obedient and not to raise too many problems and so on. So yeah, there are efforts to control people and make them more stupid. But human beings aren't stupid. You know, I know manual workers who are, I think, smarter than the people in the faculty clubs and solve harder problems. The institutions of power which are um, penetrated and attempts are made to manipulate them are the political parties, the security services, the military institutions, the trade union organizations especially, the youth and student movements, cultural organizations, professional societies, and in a very big way, the public information media. The CIA from the very beginning, at least as early as 1951, has used the information that it has collected. And it has used the information in order to penetrate and to manipulate the institutions of power in whatever country it is operating in order to influence the course of events in those countries. And essentially, this uh, boils down to propping up those forces which are considered to be the friendly forces and in penetrating, dividing, weakening, and ultimately destroying those forces which are considered to be the enemy forces. We are endowed by our Creator with rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness which nobody, nobody, no person, no group, no political party, not even our government, can take away from us. Hitler had a dream that his big business should dominate the world. He called his dream the new order, new order, new order. We've already amended the Constitution dozens of times. Let's throw it away for a master plan run by a master state. Morgan is the largest group. Then there is the strong Kuhn Loeb group. The Mellon interests, which have Westinghouse, DuPont with General Motors, and then there is Rockefeller, and three other groups, making up a grand total of some $82 billion assets in 1945. Eight groups control the American economy, not only because of their concentration of wealth, but through their strategic ownership of basic industries. In spite of war, these companies operate internationally, internationally subsidiary, stock participation, and cartel agreements with various global So it's not just an ideology, it's an action plan. It's a blueprint to inventory and control all land, all water, all plants, all animals, all production, all construction, 
all law enforcement, all energy, all food, all information, everything on the planet, including you. Oh, make you want to kick a fat kid at Kmart. You know what I'm saying? Praise God, baby. The right left uh, paradigm in the U.S. and in U.S. politics is taken directly from the commercial world and the, the corporate world. In the business world, you have Coke, Pepsi, you have McDonald's, Burger King, you've got at and Verizon, you know, you've got duopolies. And a duopoly gives the illusion of there being some competition and some choice. And it looks a little bit better than a monopoly. So, for example, in communist Russia, if they had communist Russia red and communist Russia chartreuse, you know, there would have been the illusion of choice and something akin to democracy in Russia. In the U.S., they have this left-right paradigm, which, uh, unfortunately, it doesn't take them out of the, 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 the hard-cold fact that there is no choice. There's no social justice. There's only one choice, which is to supply more rent to the rent seekers who have now taken the whole system hostage. You've got a very small group of people and the Federal Reserve and the global central banking system and the Bank of International Settlements in Switzerland who are purposefully managing the boom and bust, credit supply, credit contraction, money supply growth, money supply contraction to create artificial roller coasters and artificial volatility that they can trade around without taking any risk. It doesn't cost them any money. It's totally asymmetric relationship between bankers and the rest of the economy. If they make a mistake, they get bailed out. If everyone else makes a mistake, they get put in jail, call the terrorists, and we never hear from them again. This is one of the people that was heavily involved with Gilan and Jeffrey. I can't say to what degree. I only know that she tried to get my sister to work there. This is Katie's modeling agency. Gilan tried to convince me in front of Katie that Annie needed to model there. And I said no. She didn't want to. Um, this place is evil, in my opinion. It was sold. Now she's running a human trafficking organization. I find that ironic, because a lot of them are. You mean like help, helping all? victims, supposedly? They're running, uh, helping survive, uh, helping people who are being trafficked, helping prevent human trafficking. Really? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's... I can't say what she's doing. Creepy. I can only say that that's how I see her. Okay, this is her husband. He owns, like, all the hotels. These people have so much power and money, you know? Mm -hmm. This whole group. Mm -hmm. It's very strange. Oh, boy. She knew everything. Who is this? Uh, this is Naomi. Oh. This is Naomi. So she's a she's a bad guy. Oh, she's a bad guy. Madonna? No. Nope. <laughs> Similar like though. Madonna. Kind of, right? They're also creepy. No, this one is uh Courtney. Courtney was in the book. And a few people have come forward, but she's been named. So she was uh she tells her own story about it. I don't believe her. And this is he's in the news right now. For what? He's being sued by all these many right. Morgan Field. She was there, my first meeting with Epstein, she was there a lot. She knew what was going on. And she didn't say anything. And so this is her evolution. She went from this adorable thing to that. And she was there at all locations. And she admits it. I mean, at least she admitted it, right? Most of them are denying it. But she admitted it. So I give her that much, but it's not much. And she's the card of fortune. <laughs> she's just beautiful. It seems very she's smart. She's an angel. Be Boy, beautiful, poised, smart. She's got it all. This is Claire. She was a Guinness, the Guinness of yesteryear, because Virginia and I told on her. And so she she was married up to the Guinness. It's not finished yet, but let's see for now. Wow. I like the thing hanging down in the middle. Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's his tail, actually, but there, uh -huh. there's this. You know, it's like a double on top. Yeah, yeah. So. And who is it that he's hanging in Virginia. Virginia? Yeah. And that's my opinion, and I'm allowed to have it. Yep, me too. Wow. I have the same opinion, yeah. The hanged man. CIA, it's Jeffrey Epstein. Yes, can you go in really close on his face? Wow. We must fight to regain our freedom 
or everything is lost. Everything. Everything is fine. 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 They're afraid. Afraid of your own ability. They're afraid of yourself. In 1970, the planet's three and a half billion people were sustainable. But on this New Year's Day, the population is eight billion. Today, wild plants and animals are running out of places to live. The five mass extinctions of the ancient past were caused by natural calamities, volcanoes, and an asteroid. Today, if the science is right, humanity may have to survive a sixth mass extinction. Too many people, too much consumption, and growth mania. Well, humanity is not sustainable to maintain uh, our lifestyle, yours and mine, basically, for the entire planet, you'd need five more Earths. Not clear where they're going to come from. Just in terms of the resources that would be required? Resources that would be required, um, the systems that support our lives, which of course are the biodiversity uh, that we're wiping out. Uh, humanity is very busily sitting on a limb that we're sawing off. I and the vast majority of my colleagues think we're, we've had it, that the next few decades will be the end of the kind of civilization we're used to. We're used to. We're used to. The end of the kind of civilization we're used to. In 1968, Ehrlich, a biology professor at Stanford, became a doomsday celebrity with a bestseller forecasting the collapse of nature. The alarm Ehrlich sounded in 68 warned that overpopulation would trigger widespread famine. He was wrong about that. In 1979, there was a call boy ring operated out of New York City, which had phone hookups with Houston, Atlanta, Los Angeles, New Orleans, Washington, D.C. And that call boy ring had a list of 10,000 clients who could call and with a credit card purchase a boy. It's sophisticated, it's closely attached to the major financial, commercial, industrial, educational institutions of our societies. It's serving the most respectable people we have in our society, the people who uh, are the elite. We have little kids who are boys. They are in more danger than the little girls today. Uh, a half a million kids run away or are thrown out of homes every year in the United States, and the majority of them are boys. If you get in a car and prowl the streets of the capitals of this practice, Houston, New Orleans, Atlanta, Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, you'll find that boys are the ones hustling more than the women. They mostly don't survive. They mostly, literally, don't live to be 20 years old. We've got to find a way to, to uh, reestablish a society which does not throw up, literally, a half million kids a year onto the city streets and leave them there to, to be hurt. The slaughter of the innocents. It's the greatest slaughter of the innocents since Herod. And it goes on and on and on. And when the public gets a, a hint of it, nothing happens. Over half of the kids who make their living this way for a period don't survive adolescence. They don't become adults. Any one of us in the country, and there aren't very many of us who have worked intensely on this for a period of years, has received threats. The day after part one of Boys for Sale was cable cast, Tom Philpott's van was vandalized. The tires were slashed and the accelerator was jammed to the floor. And then the following week, Tom was shot in what appears to have been an assassination attempt. Society has not been good to children, has not prote protected children, in, in fact is contemptuous of children, heartless to children. And they're such helpless victims. Who can they go to? What constituency do they have? Well, my career in law enforcement, I actually joined the Brotherhood of Freemasons. You know, a lot of cops are involved with that. Uh, it's a thing that, I'm not saying you must do, but 95% of them do. It's the occult, there's not gonna be messing with uh, My lieutenant spoke for me. You know, I petitioned, it all went pretty good. The the first phase is the inner apprentice phase. The second is fellow craft. That's, fellow craft. yeah, that's uh, the second degree, fellow craft. Now, what did I get myself into, but- Did you ever get that far? 
Oh yeah, I became a master mason. Ranks of 30th to 33, which is three. Uh, that's when they divulge the, the, the actual truth to you. To get that high, it takes years. In order for you to be a Shriner, you gotta be a Mason. For you be a Knights Templar, you gotta be a Mason. And you, the, the more you go up in that pyramid, and the highest you could go is a rough child. Right. They're the highest of the highest. Really? Yeah, they, children of Satan. Right. Moloch is the actual owl that they worship out in California, all these big shots. And that's where they make the presidents too. Really? They make presidents there. To do with them oh people. yeah, you have to be a Freemason to be there. All the presidents were Freemasons. Okay. A small portion weren't, but they were Jesuits. This is the same thing. Okay. Yeah, even the Pope. Yeah, it's, everything is controlled by the white and black Pope. Yeah. So black and white, which is uh, white and black tiles, is where oh, we have our oh, temple. That's where you get that. Yeah, okay. the yin yang. You know, the, right. the good versus evil. You got to have one of the balance. They know which president they're going to make. They make them. They, all this po political stuff. Right. That's just. BS. Right. Uh, the all seeing eye is the Lucifer. Right. Underneath them is the Rothschilds. Underneath them is the Council of 13. Underneath them, you got the Council of 33. Underneath them, you got the Council of Foreign Relations. And underneath them, you got, you know, like six big companies. All, they own all the real estate and they own all like media. The Masons are the foot soldiers of the Illuminati. You understand right. the pyramid, right? Yes, yes. It's shaped like a, like a triangle, right? right? So we're at the very bottom. Rothschilds, they run all that from their house. They don't, they don't leave that house. Why is that? I mean, is there because that's where the devil dwells. Gotcha. The, dwell, the, the devil could only be in one place. God is everywhere. Yeah. You understand? See, if, if you start exposing them, they'll go after you. They'll go after your family. They'll try to kill you because the government is part of it. A lot of them are politicians, heavily involved in witchcraft. Mm. And they have to do certain rituals or certain thing, and with those orders come money comes with it. Satanic at the core. This whole country is not based upon Christianity. It's satanic mm -hmm. from head to toe. Don't ever think that the president is not a satanic worshiper either. Don't ever think. I'm gonna put it out there because I mean, come on, their god is money, Lucifer, and I was involved in that. Yeah, you swore never to divulge any information, but to always protect and help your fellow brother. That's wow. it. Anybody out there considering to becoming a, a Freemason, Freemason, don't do it. Questioning propaganda narratives necessarily means taking conspiracy theory seriously. When someone calls you a conspiracy theorist, they have already lost the argument because that epithet is a way to prevent discussion from taking place. And a lot of these fact checks, you know, and that kind of thing that, that, that are now, dare I say, pandemic, you know, you do a search on practically anything that's controversial, and what Google will give you first is page after page of, of denials and rebuttals and all that kind of stuff, right? You have to go way, way, way down to find the actual story itself that's being called a hoax. That's because in defending the propaganda narrative, they don't have an argument. They don't have a defense. They have none. They have none. So they basically fill, try to fill people's minds with derisive portrayals of the people uh, you know, raising the questions. Let's try to cast our minds back to 2019, okay? You might say 1 BC, okay? <laughs> 1 before COVID. The world was you know, hit with all kinds of organic, spontaneous protest movements that year. I think it's worth recalling with a sense of poignancy that there were all these organic protests in 2019 because the rollout of the virus put an end to all that very, very efficiently. I, for one, believe that we were subjected to a series of carefully planned psychological operations over the course of 2020 and just beyond. A global propaganda spectacle uh, of unprecedented scale and sophistication to be anti-vaxxers and conspiracy theorists. With reasons varying from general skepticism to conspiracy theories. A new wave of conspiracy theories that have been shared through social media. And COVID-19 is acting as an accelerant to conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories voted definitely true by dipshit Uncle Quarterly. Evil theories about, you know, did we create the pandemic? Are we trying to profit from it? If you go online, there's no shortage of conspiracy theories. Let's start with the most widespread theory, that the virus escaped from a Chinese laboratory. It is very, very strongly leaning towards this could not have been artificially or deliberately manipulated. Something you probably have heard from a certain corner of the right is this theory that the coronavirus, quote, escaped from the lab. 
the email sent to you said conspiracy theory gains momentum. So how did we get here with America's most prominent public health expert saying that the lab leak theory, which was previously hawked by conspiracy theorists, might actually be credible? The, the best evidence that the nation has been schooled to the point of extinction. Now, we have, and I don't think it surprised anybody, that George Bush, the most recent one, was a C average in high school, prep school, and a C average at Yale. What does surprise people is that the candidate he ran against was a C average in prep school and a C average at Yale and a lower C average than George Bush's on the Cary of Massachusetts. And they were fraternity brothers at Yale. There's 308 million of us. I mean, mathematically, I wouldn't know how to set the odds, but they would be stupendous. No one mentioned it, or if they did, it was to quickly get over that. That should have been headlines with the New York Times and the Washington Post. Fraternity brothers at Yale run for president. You wouldn't need to mention that it was the skull and bones fraternity. How could that happen unless, but there's a, a Jewish expression, chutzpah, unless this feeling of contempt for ordinary people was very dramatic. I'm sure someone in the councils who allowed that to happen said, maybe someone will notice. When the skew from sanity is that of that magnitude, you should not expect much to come from the watchdogs of, of our liberty and our best interests. The freedom of speech is meaningless unless it means the freedom of the person who thinks differently because what he has to say might in any case give people to think about why do they know what they already think they know how do i know that i know this except that i've always been taught this and never heard anything else how sure am i of, of my own views don't take refuge in the full security of consensus and the feeling that whatever you think you're bound to be okay because you're in the safely moral majority it's not just the right of the person who speaks to be heard it is the right of everyone in the audience to listen and to hear and every time you silence somebody, you make yourself a prisoner of your own action because you deny yourself the right to hear something. Enemies may attempt to destroy or disable our people by striking directly at the civilian population. Attacks may be made with biological weapons. There's a new poison. One ounce. You wipe out an entire city. Aerosols could be spread over large areas. Agents could contaminate the city water supply. The use of modern drugs. Mass inoculation make people sick. Everyone would become sick. Biological warfare attacks take on a definite pattern. In your home, at work, food crops, livestock. Biological warfare. Be careful what you eat and drink. Packaged foods in cupboards and refrigerators, canned and bottled goods are probably contaminated. Water used for drinking or washing must be boiled. Biological warfare. What do they expect me to do about it? Don't listen to scare talk. Rumors and medical authority. You had better find out the facts about biological warfare. Get a copy of this official booklet at the first opportunity. Read it and remember it. Then if sickness does come to your home, you'll know what to do. Your part, and we can successfully combat biological warfare. African countries are hungry is because their ability to produce their food was destroyed by the right to dump by Cargill. Cargill wrote the agreement on agriculture and then the junk food industry, the Pepsis and Cokes and Nestle's wrote the sanitary and phytosanitary agreement and created the codex alimentarius to shut down healthy food and push the food that gave us illnesses, 75% chronic diseases. This is not a conspiracy. There is evidence that the corporations wrote the rules. Then it created the billionaires. Now the billionaires rule the world. And I call them the 1%, not because they're 1%. They're just a handful. And when you ask me, you know, what's the optimism? For me, the optimism is a pathetic a group of ignorant, selfish men are not more powerful than all the people who've occupied the palace of the president in Sri Lanka. 
the farmers who've occupied the streets of Netherlands. People have power. We've been made to think we are inert. We've been made to think nature is inert. And all it is is a colonization of our mind. The minute we become free and say, we are part of nature, we are creative and we are powerful. Powerful in a different way. Powerful in the way of Shakti. Powerful in the way of, of non-violent resistance, of absolutely refusing. By far, the most chilling experiments we have uncovered took place at this Gothic estate called Raven's Crag, halfway up Mount Royal in Montreal. It was here that the CIA funded a series of experiments. The work was done by the Institute's then director, Dr. Ewan Cameron. His work, unprecedented in psychiatry, consisted of three areas which he called sleep therapy, psychic driving, and the ultimate depatterning. It would appear that Dr. Cameron was trying to take the slate and wipe it clean, the slate being the mind. In other words, brainwashing. Exactly, that's a very good comparison. Val Orlico of Winnipeg, Canada, the wife of a member of the Canadian Parliament, was a patient of Dr. Cameron's. She describes for the first time publicly the LSD therapy and psychic driving treatment that she was given by Dr. Cameron. And then the drug began to take hold very rapidly because it was an IV injection and um, things became very furry and uh, very frightening and uh, had a lot of sensations that it's very difficult to recall. Nobody explained it to me, nobody ever asked me if I was willing to do it or anything. The most severe technique Cameron used was depatterning. He described it as breaking up the existing patterns of behavior by means of intensive electroshock therapy with prolonged periods of sleep. He carried out these experiments in something he called the sleep rooms. People in there were like babies. They cried and they were very disoriented. And we were very afraid of the sleep room. We used to walk very carefully against the side of the corridor that was opposite the sleep room with our backs to the wall when we'd go by. Cameron used this combined sleep electroshock treatment on patients as long as 30 days. One patient he kept asleep for 65 days. I... I realize the CIA is a very important organization and they have a very important job to do, but God, it surely doesn't have to be done on people who are totally incapable of knowing what's happening or having any defense against it. And I, I, I can't imagine the mentality of people who would do this. I just can't. As for Dr. Cameron, he died in 1966 while mountain climbing. I, I wouldn't... I... I, I could have maybe had a different kind of life. And that makes me angry and sad, and I don't know what, how to explain how I feel, really. I just, I just... There's a method to their madness. There's really not much method to yours because you're operating from a place of ignorance. And until you change that, you're gonna be bumbling around, bumping into each other, saying and doing the wrong things, not understanding the nature of your en enemy. And if you don't understand the nature of your enemy and the weapons they use, you cannot fight that enemy. You can't fight the battle. You shouldn't even be on the battlefield. That's why you're losing the war. You're losing the war. And don't tell me you're not, because I'm in a place of great knowledge about who's winning and who's losing this war. And I can assure you, you're losing the war. There is written in the Constitution of the United States that Congress has the right to coin, issue, and regulate the value of money. That's good Americanism, and it's good enough for me. Every politician today in the Democratic or Republican ranks doesn't believe in that part of the Constitution. They don't want to believe in that part of the Constitution. They believe that the Federal Reserve Bank has the right to coin and regulate the value of money. They're not even Americans, these so-called Democrats and Republicans.
use monetary and sex bribery to obtain control of men already in high places in the various levels of all governments and other fields of endeavor. Once influential persons had fallen for the lies, deceits, and temptations of the Illuminati, they were to be held in bondage by application of political and other forms of blackmail, threats of financial ruin, public exposure and physical harm, even death to themselves and loved members of their families. Do you realize how many present top officials in our federal government in Washington are controlled in just that way? We all know that our State Department, the Pentagon, and the White House have brazenly proclaimed that they have the right and the power to manage the news, to tell us not the truth, but what they want us to believe. The masterminds behind this great conspiracy have absolute control of all of our mass communications media, especially television, the radio, the press, and Hollywood. The objective is to transform the United States into an enslaved unit of the United Nations One World Government. You probably are familiar with the story of how one Dr. Frankenstein created a monster to do his will of destroying his chosen victims, but how instead, in the end, that monster turned on his own creator and destroyed him. Well, the Illuminati has created a monster called the United Nations. We know all about that many-headed Hydra monster. We know the names of those who created that monster. We know all their names. True, the majority of our people are still being brainwashed deceived and deluded, but surely one fine day the American people will come fully awake and cause that very monster to destroy its creator. Liberty is too precious a thing to be buried in books, Miss Saunders. Men should hold it up in front of them every single day of their lives and say, I'm free think and to speak. Today, the increasing effort to understand man's place in the grand scheme of things proceeds at an accelerated pace. The answer to this problem won't all be found in the laboratory, because many of the most important answers to the question, where did I come from, what am I doing here, and where am I going after death, will be found in the realm of the spiritual. And I don't think many scientists today would presume to say a thing may not be simply because they do not understand it. Nor would they deny the validity of spiritual experiences of others because they have been without such experiences themselves. Just as science has proven a help to religion, so religion in its finest expression has given impetus to science. There is no end to the progress of a man who seeks for truth. Death is not the end. It is but one more step in the great forward march made possible by the redemption of the Savior. Of this I am convinced. I think it's time to stop. I knew it! Something! <gasps> the symbol of the Illuminati! Illuminati's plan for world domination, all laid out. It was only a matter of time. <laughs> I am Lumino, head of the Illuminati. <laughs> I suppose there's no harm in walking you through our plan for world domination. We did work hard on it. It all starts here with the banks. We don't care about the banks. Tell us about the animals. Animals? The pelican, the crab, and the seagull, fool. I don't know what you're talking about. Playing dumb, eh? Then we'll have to do this the hard way. Titans, go! Conspiracy cover-up! Illuminati laser! Conspiracy crush! Conspiracy no game! Yeah! Now talk, 
Where are the animals? Really? I don't know. I'll stop all our domination plans. I'll pull my lizard men out of Congress. We'll stop using Hollywood to hasten the New World Order. Just let me go. I am Lucifer. Okay, define Lucifer for me. Pure, virtuous, wholesome, innocent individual that's out to help people. Lucifer is? Yeah. Luc say that again. Lucifer is a pure, holy... Virtuous. Virtuous. Now, see the Lucifer that God created? That's the same one. Oh, man, this is great. I'm going to put this on the Internet. Oh, Amen. God bless you, Amen. brother. <laughs> see, this is what a Mason confesses, is that Lucifer is light. I'm starting to notice things I never saw before. Well, maybe I saw them. I just wasn't paying attention. For some reason, <laughs> everything has become a metaphor. It never changes, you know. Uh... Uh, they change a person here and there, but it's always the insiders. It's always from the same group. So if you have a Republican as president or the Democrats, they're going to get the same appointments. Appointments never change. And this can be said about the Secretary of State and the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of Treasury and, and the Federal Reserve Board members. They all come from the same group. And even though, I guess naively, I th was hopeful that the same group of individuals would not have as much power under, Ron, under Ronald Reagan. So uh, either side, they're, they're the same people control it. And, you know, Ronald Reagan spoke sharply against the Trilateral Commission, but he was the first president to host the Trilateral Commission in the White House. It has become a modern trend to demean, belittle, and deny someone's position and point of view by simply accusing them of being a conspiracy theorist. Conspiracy or to conspire means to make secret plans jointly to commit an unlawful or harmful act. A theory is a supposition of ideas intended to explain something. A theorem is a general proposition not self-evident but proved by a chain of reasoning. Conspiracies are not theories, they are theorems. They can be proven by the simple fact that organized evil has a historicity. It is without question that people in all sorts of different arenas, political, military, economic, social, conspire for myriad reasons all the time. Make no mistake about it, there are people with hands on the levers. There are shadowy figures behind the scenes making decisions, and there are evil forces putting deviant plans into motion. The etymology of the word government has been well established, with govern meaning to control or steer, and meant derived from the Latin meaning mind. Therefore, a direct etymological deconstruction of the word government yields us the term mind control. It is thus no fault of reason or logic to deem the entirety of government to be, by very definition, a psyops, or a psychological operation. The powerful and sadistic of this world have duped humanity. They have perverted science to hide the true shape of the earth, perverted religion to possess and misguide the masses. They have sold a prepackaged sack of lies deemed history, corrupted the secret orders intending to be custodians of light, destroyed the ways of the old world, buried the traditions, led inquisitions against purity and truth, indoctrinated the minds of youth by manipulating the educational system, poisoned the earth, poisoned the food, poisoned the sky, poisoned the water supply. Why? 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 <laughs> Since its founding in 1921, the CFR has produced 21 Secretaries of War and Defense, 19 Treasury Secretaries, 18 Secretaries of State, and 16 CIA Directors. The Council's journal, Foreign Affairs, has pushed for world government for over 90 years. In its first year of publication, 1922, it declared, Obviously, there is going to be no peace or prosperity for mankind so long as it remains divided into 50 or 60 independent states. The real problem today is that of world government. When you put all of that together, 
you recognize that the CFR, the Trilateral Commission, is nothing more but an elaborate attempt to, as they say themselves, make an end run around national sovereignty, diminish the independence and autonomy of the United States, and merge it into this global governing institution that they, of course, foresee themselves running. Some of the prominent members of the CFR, Council on Foreign Relations, George Herbert Walker Bush, Bill Clinton, Sandra Day O'Connor, Dick Cheney, Les Aspen, Colin Powell, Robert Gates, Brent Skrokoff, Jesse Jackson Sr., uh, Mario Cuomo, Dan Rather, Tom Brokaw, David Brinkley, John Chancellor, Marvin Kalb, Diane Sawyer, Bob, Robert Walters, Cyrus Vance, Paul Volcker, Henry Kissinger, George Schultz, Bruce Babbitt, Howard Baker, Samuel Berger, Elaine Chow, Diane Feinstein, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Chuck Hagel, Gary Hart, John McCain, George Mitchell, Bill Moyers, Jay Rockefeller, Donna Shalala, Strobe Talbot, Fred Thompson, Robert Zolek, Richard Nixon, Hubert Humphrey, George McGovern, Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, John Anderson, Walter Mondale, Michael Dukakis, Al Gore, John Kerry, uh, on and on. I mean, you notice, uh, you notice first of all that you're talking Republicans and Democrats, conservatives and liberals. You're, you're talking uh, people in every area of government and news media. You're talking education establishment. You're talking basically the key establishment institutions of the country are all um, infiltrated with Council on Foreign Relations members. Why is this institution so powerful that no matter whether it's Republican or a Democrat in the White House, they are going to fill their administration with members of the CFR? We're gonna, there's gonna be a new world order out there. I pity the country. Remember when the world used to trust us? I pity the state. When they looked to us for leadership? Our country is less secure and more isolated than it has been any time in recent history. They know, I knew, they knew, everybody knows. The system does produce corruption, and in, in, I think implicit in the system is corruption. See, I went to the big guys for the money. I was ready to prostitute myself. Well, I'm not sure you should assume I'm not corrupt, but I'm, thank you for that. Though. I've done some dumb things, and I'll do dumb things again. I set up my son to work in an oil company. Isn't that what you said? I Get your word straight, Jack. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been dumb. I bear responsibility for fundamentally all that's happened of late. We are living in an era marked by the growth of socialism. To a substantial degree, in one form or another, socialism has spread the shadow of human regimentation over most of the nations of the earth. And the shadow is encroaching upon our own liberty. The socialists among us seek to bring about a gradual change in our system by gradually destroying the principle of the private ownership of property and substituting the socialist principle of government ownership. Unless we understand and work effectively for the principles upon which our American way of life is founded, the structure will crumble and our heritage of freedom will perish. If we permit our great system to crumble through the apathy of our citizenship, we shall lose not only our freedom, but our prosperity and our still brighter future. If each of us will rise to the occasion, then the socialists and communists and their followers will not prevail. I have a competition in me. I want no one else to succeed. out there tonight, 
So I'm going to give you this admonition, and you must obey it no matter what. You must not believe anything that you hear on this show, or on the Chuck Harder show, or on the Tom Ballantyne show, or on Larry King Live, or from the lips of Dan Rather, or George Bush, or Bill Clinton, or anyone else in this entire world, whether you hear it on radio, or on television, or from the lips of someone standing right in front of you. But you must listen to everyone, no matter who they are or what they are saying. For that is the true mark of intelligence. Listen to everything, believe nothing, until you can prove you, yourself. You must learn how to find the truth and prove it. If you can't do that, you might as well turn off your radio now. If you have to call someone else to ask if you should be listening to this show, you should turn off your radio now. We don't even want you to listen. Understand, folks, that only free-thinking, intelligent people who are prepared to root through all the crap and get at the truth should be listening to this show and nobody else. My admonition is the same with reading, whether it be newspapers or books or tea leaves, I don't care what it is. Read everything, believe nothing, until you can prove through your own efforts, whether it is true or false, or lies somewhere in between in the many shades of gray. If you don't do this, if you cannot do this, or will not do this, or just plain too lazy to do this, then I can assure you that you will march into the New World Order as a docile slave. Bah! Bah! Bahing all the way. For only free-thinking people who listen to everything and read everything ever come close to the truth, and I can assure you that it is elusive. Everyone else are just puppets on the end of someone's string, and when that person pulls that string, those puppets dance right on cue because that's exactly what they are supposed to do. The men who wrote our Constitution, our basic book of rules, were concerned that power be held accountable. No party of government and no person in government, not even the president, was to pick or choose among the laws to be obeyed. But how does one branch of government blow the whistle on another? Or how do the people cry foul when their liberties are imperiled if public officials can break the rules, lie to us about it, and then wave the wand of national security to silence us? The apparatus of secret power remains intact, operating in the sanctuary of presidential privilege, which can, of course, be exercised beyond public scrutiny. This is a system easily corrupted as the public grows indifferent again and the press is seduced or distracted. So one day, we're likely to discover that while freedom does have enemies in the world, it can also be undermined here at home, in the dark, by those posing as its friends. I'm Bill Moyers. Good night. Now, we are going to enjoy this meal. No one can stop us from enjoying this meal, so enjoy it! A radical plan to crack down on social media abuse is being considered by the federal government. Stop crying! For more, Nine's Oliver Haig joins us live in Adelaide. Ollie, how will it work? Lila, good morning. Essentially, it will work the same as a passport. Australians forced to submit 100 points of identification like their driver's licence or passport when using social media accounts like Facebook and Twitter. Now, police would have access to those social media accounts, and it's all part of a crackdown on online abuse. Now, users could be liable for defamation suits or even criminal prosecution, and it's all part of a plan hoping to deter people from engaging in bad behaviour. Now, the recommendations were handed down by a federal parliamentary inquiry. There are reforms that are being considered by the Morrison government, with the chairman saying there is merit to remove, to remove uh, the veil of being anonymous. Layla? Are you a patriotic American? Yes, sir. Eager to do your part? Yes, sir. Then there's something important you can do. Your income tax. Income tax? Yes, your income tax. It may not seem important to you, but it is important. Uh, what? Yes, and it's your privilege, not just your duty, but your privilege to help your government by paying your tax and paying it promptly. Oh, what's the big hurry? What's the big hurry? Your country is at war.
Your country needs taxes for guns, taxes for ships, taxes for democracy, taxes, taxes to, to beat, beat the, the Axis. Axis. That's the spirit. Yes, sir. Now, how about your income tax? Oh, boy. Let me it. Okay, let's go. Why, you don't need all that stuff. Do I? No. You made less than $3,000 last year? Yes, sir. Well, then, you can use the new simplified form. It's streamlined. It's, it's simple. simple. All you need is a tax blank, your pen. Right here. Some ink. Yes, sir. And a blotter. Take a big drink, son. We got work to do. Now, what was your income? Oh, my, uh, yes, well. Now, don't guess. It will save a lot of trouble if you get it right. The total income is exactly $2,501. All right. Subtract your credit for dependents. That comes to $1,701. You're single with dependents. Yes, sir. Then just look in column B, okay. and you'll find it all, all worked, worked out for you. $1,701.75. Would you sign here, please? Now, if you really want to help, mail it in early. Be one of the first. Okay. So long. Well, <laughs> this isn't necessary, but it shows the new spirit. The sooner you get your taxes in, the sooner they'll get to work. For it's your taxes, my taxes, our taxes that run the factories. American factories, working day and night. Factories making guns, machine guns. Heavy tank guns, long range guns, 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 all kinds of guns. To blast the aggressors from the seas. The Woman of the Year Award, supported by Virgin Atlantic, goes to. Dylan Mulvaney! Hello, London! I am so honored to be here with you all tonight. <laughs> I'm a fucking mess. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. One of the biggest underground storage facilities in the Midwest is getting even bigger. Uh Core Subtropolis is a snapshot of our culture, our past, our present, and our future. In all, more than 50 businesses call Subtropolis home, and they have room for a lot more. Entrance. There's another entrance via railroad. All the flags, different countries in the United in in the world, here on Earth, right here. I mean, this place. It's huge. It branches off. It branches off. Everything's blocked off. And when we first come in, it said maintenance and authorized personnel entrance only. And then you had the public entrance. Yeah, what's on the other side? That's the question. Chair. Dude, this is creepy. This looks like it lead to a stairs case. Yeah. This looks what? like hey. this oh like a gosh. it's like oh. a what? It's so vintage. This is amazing. This is like a time capsule in here.
The tunnel to the base inside Cheyenne Mountain is iconic, but what goes on inside is top secret. It's been the subject of intrigue and popular culture for decades. Driving south to Colorado Springs, it looms in the distance. One of the most famous military bases in the world, Cheyenne Mountain. Inside the mountain are 15 two and three story buildings. They are freestanding, but connected by hallways and ramps. There is also a service area to keep the complex running and even reservoirs, yes, underground lakes. You can imagine security for the control rooms is pretty tight. Our security escort said he can't even get inside them. I can only uh, fantasize about what goes on in there. Maybe a lot, maybe a little, but whatever it is, is obviously important, so. I mean, just think about it, okay? First, the stock market would go. Then, the economy, boom! The dollar, boom! And then pandemonium in the streets, war, genocide, ba 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 boom, boom, boom! Bullshit, nobody could keep that big a secret, Charlie. Somebody blow the whistle. And every once in a while, some poor little sucker tries, well, like these guys, boom, boom! Every one of these guys, dead, dead, dead! Whoa, 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 whoa. That's, that's, that's Professor Myers. He, he ran the Atlantis shuttle program? What, did you know him? Yeah, he helped me out with research on my book. Oh, well, that must have been before his accident. Myers is dead. Oh, yeah, two months ago, he was one of my most avid listeners, and he had it all figured out. Everything the government was doing, where and why. He even sent me a map. A map for what, Charlie? What's the map for? Building spaceships, man. Shit, man. I... They used to meet in secret. Only members were allowed to attend. They had a secret emblem, the pentagram. Now I'll be a punched redhead kid. <laughs> Hidden within the pentagram is a secret for creating a golden rectangle, which the Greeks admired for its beautiful proportions and magic qualities. The star contains the golden rectangle many times over. It's a most remarkable shape. It can mathematically reproduce itself indefinitely. All these rectangles have exactly the same proportions. This figure also contains a magic spiral that repeats the proportions of the golden section into infinity. Think of a pentagram, Donald. Think of a pentagram. Now put another inside, a third, and a fourth. No pencil is sharp enough to draw as fine as you can think, and no paper large enough to hold your imagination. In fact, it is only in the mind that we can conceive infinity. Mathematical thinking has opened the doors to the exciting adventures of science. Each discovery leads to many others. An endless chain. Hey, what's the matter with these doors? Hey, these doors won't open. They're locked. Of course they are locked. These are the doors of the future. These are the doors of the future. And the key is... Mathematics. Right. Mathematics. 
the boundless treasures of science are locked behind those doors. In time, they will be opened by the curious and inquiring minds of future generations. In the words of Galileo, mathematics is the alphabet with which God has written the universe. Um, uh, uh, I, I tried to hang myself? Because my life's a mess? And I saw no other option? Uh, I think you're telling the truth, but why are you saying it like you're lying? It was a call for help, but it didn't work because... I'm too heavy and the ceiling lamp broke? Something like that? Yeah. 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 I think uh -huh. you're, you're telling the truth. Uh, yeah, that's what I... Take me home! Turn up my phone, so many messages I wish I could just delete. Questioning my existence, questioning my decisions, burning down all the bridges, think I'm gonna finish. I don't want you to visit, no. No! know much about Halloween. You thought no further than the strange custom of having your children wear masks and go out begging for candy. It was the start of the year in our old Celtic lands and we'd be waiting in our houses of wattles and clay. The barriers would be down, you see, between the real and the unreal. And the dead might be looking in to sit by our fires of turf. Halloween. The festival of Samhain. The last great one took place 3,000 years ago when the hills ran red with the blood of animals and children. The sacrifices are part of our world. Our craft. Witchcraft. To us, it was a way of controlling our environment. It's not so different now. It's time again. In the end, we don't decide these things, you know. And... Happy Halloween. If you get the opportunity, you should kill yourself. The secrets of the universe! It's all there! Life is fiery with its beauty! It's incredible detail! Tuning into it! They want to shatter your mind! Talking about Justin Learn what it means to let go of something. To let go that you are blaming yourself. Everybody is walking through this lifetime making faulty actions. Making it wrong the first time is not a problem. Because you must have made it wrong in order now to rethink, to become more intelligent and figure out the solution. It only then becomes a mistake if you continuously do it wrong over and over again without taking the past into consideration what happened before and repeat that mistake. This is the real mistake. But without any experience in a certain field, how could you know better?
what decision to take.